Uh, town to the east of that country called Mbali. CSW has always been a very refreshing space, you know, to attend. When we come from the grassroots to these uh, international gatherings, there is a lot of learning, learning from other people's experiences, but also sharing our own experiences from the grassroots. So what we are learning in this particular CSW one, on one hand, it is just how strong the women's voice has become over the years. And uh, one begins to see that advocates for gender equality and uh, the empowerment of women have increased and younger people are joining this uh, process, both men and women. And we as Baha'i communities are also deeply engaged in, this, in these processes. trying to really bring this um, concept of equality within all the spaces that we exist um, in right now. Um, that is one contribution we're trying to make. The other thing is also to talk about equality because sometimes I think we need to actually go a little bit deeper into what equality between men and women actually means because I think it has very profound uh, implications in our lives and it's sometimes it can be just a slogan saying that men and women are equal but what do we actually mean by this? <laughs> I've really been privileged and honored to be invited to the CSW. Um, the uh, discourse going on all around me, I felt this year, uh, has both a, a darkness and a lightness. The darkness for me is really realizing the plight of girls and women in the world in a mo much more profound way um, than I understood it before. And I thought I had some grasp of that. I realize I have only the tip of the iceberg. Um, I feel also simultaneously that there's a spirit, and maybe it's because of the Me Too movement, I don't know, but I feel that there's a lot of women uh, who are clearly speaking about the, um, the benefits of encouragement, the benefits of being kind with each other, the benefit of inclusion for all. Um, and I mean in the conversations that are happening. Um, it's like they're speaking a spiritual language without actually saying that it's spiritual language. Um, so I feel like it's a, it's a mixture of really understanding what is going on in the world and what is the plight. I actually think people are feeling that empowerment and bringing it into these consultations at the CSW this year.
we're striving to learn about what the equality of men and women look like in our society. We release sp the spiritual capacities, our intellectual capacities to create a world that's completely new maybe that we don't, what we see here, whether it be our physical structures, but also just the way that we relate with one another, the way that we feel empowered around each other to contribute to service, to contribute to the betterment of humanity. Um, you know, even see the way that we may see service, not as my own service or your service, or the service of a woman, or the service of a man, or the service that's rendered by this population or by that population, but that we all, that the service belongs to all. Our aim and our chief hope for every other person in this world is to enable them to serve humanity and we would do anything um, that we possibly could to enable another soul, another person, whether they're a woman or a man, to, to contribute to the betterment of society. So I think one of the things that Baha'i communities uh, around the world are doing, and that, that my home community is one of them, um, is really trying to think about how does um, a community as a whole advance, um, and within that process, how do um, men and women equally contribute to that, to that advancement, to that process, um, sort of working shoulder to shoulder. The fundamental equality of women and men is a central and explicit um, tenet of the Baha'i faith. That this is um, explicitly stated in the Baha'i holy writings that women and men um, are and always have been equal in the sight of God. I feel like gender equality, as with many aspects in the world today, are very closely related to the dire need for humanity to recognize our essential oneness, and um, that being an important um, aspect of our being able to realize justice in this world. So um, a lot of the work that I do and the conversations I participate in um, and think about have to do with how we can advance women's meaningful and full participation in uh, society, be it at the level of discourse or action within institutions and communities as individuals. Um, and so with that full participation of women with men, um, society is in a better place to identify arrangements that would be just uh, to advance together in unity um, and to really be able to realize humanity's full potential and to realize peace. So I serve as a coordinator of Illumin Media Project, and it's a project that is a grassroots community media initiative. So working with young people to think about how can we create uplifting narrative media content that uh, reinforces and extends some of the concepts and ideas that are part of the Junior Youth Empowerment Program, which is a program that really helps young people think about their capacity for service, their power of expression, and the ways in which they want to contribute in the world. So what are their talents, capacities, and essentially basically the idea that they're noble. A very dear friend who was a champion of this initiative said, Esther, you gotta go shoot that film. And I was like, yeah, you know, we have the script, it's fine, let's just, maybe later, I don't know, never shot a film actually by myself. So he said, just go shoot it on your iPhone, I don't care, just go figure it out. Because if you don't take action, then you won't learn anything. The role of media is essentially to convey truth um, and if the equality of men and women is a fundamental truth 
then media has a responsibility and a wonderful opportunity to to express this. If someone commits an error and wrong towards you, you must instantly forgive him. What's this thing you just posted? It's a quote. Okay, but what does it mean? So when I think about the role of media in society and the challenges that I, I see in the world of media, I often see that there's um, a disconnect between should media entertain, should media inform, is it a teacher, what's the responsibility of the media. And I feel like media in its best case, those things aren't mutually exclusive. Like it can be a number of those things at the same time. But definitely at its core, media I think has a responsibility to elevate the conversation, whether that's with a sitcom or a drama or a factual program, that when we think about working in media as Baha'is, we need to be thinking about how do we, how do we offer hope? How do we give a way forward? Um, how do we offer a pathway towards something just a little bit better? And if we can think about it through that lens, I think we have to acknowledge that there's responsibility. I think discourse can happen anywhere and that as we engage personally with people, then culture can change. It's slow, but culture can change. It's very promising to see that so much effort is in and um, you can actually see the power of unity here, so that makes me very hopeful.